Hi guys, I wanna talk about the Middle Ages. Once again, a vast time period that we won't begin to scratch the surface or do any kind of justice to, but just to share a couple thoughts about uh, this time period. So we left off with ancient art, we looked at Greece and Rome, and we left off uh, in the late Roman Empire with Constantine. And now we're gonna pick up in the Middle Ages, early Christianity, and we've got some catacombs, and this moment when the Roman Emperor Constantine converts to Christianity. Um, and as Roman authority wanes, a new culture forms influenced part by Roman traditions, but largely shaped by Christianity. Okay. So um, then we follow uh, with the rise of Islam and what we'll call the early Middle Ages. And here's you know, a carving and some architecture And then I'm going to move to the Romanesque already. So we had the Y1K, right? So a few years back, you guys were pretty young, but Y2K, we were worried about computers crashing. Y1K, they were worried about the whole world crashing. Uh, but it didn't, so we moved on. Uh, cathedrals and churches, wall paintings and illustrated manuscripts, crusades. Uh, Hildegard von Bingen. So she's a really interesting person who um, I wish we could talk about. I just, unfortunately, I don't have time. But if, you, if you're interested... Um, so Hildegard was a polymath. Um, she did many things. She uh, founded a convent. She invented her own alphabet. Um, the list of accomplishments is large. Among them, uh, she is the oldest. She is the first composer whose name we know. And if you're curious, I have some links here uh, to uh, some pages on our, our old Art 110 wiki. Um, if you click here, you can see some, some of her paintings, uh, some of her manuscript illustrations. And if you click here, I've got three tracks of music, kind of a, an anonymous four um, recording that is as accurate to her time period as we're able to uh, project. And then I have a somewhat more inspired <laughs> version from the vocalist Jocelyn Montgomery and the film director David Lynch, which is maybe you know what her work might sound like if our ears could be in her time or, or vice versa. And then kind of the disco remix of Hildegard from a, an artist, David Souther. So you know the, the new version may be blasphemous to, to some ears, but is kind of you know her uh, his thought of her in our contemporary times. Anyway, you can check out a little bit about her, um, some of these CDs that I put uh, some sample tracks up for for you. Um, and uh, uh, really interesting artist, but I better keep going. Okay. Um, so let's talk, let's talk briefly about the Gothic. So we have the early Gothic. Uh, uh, the, so this is the age of cathedrals. Uh, Notre Dame, uh, Chartres, which is the cathedral that I'll mainly say a few words about. And well, let me just open a couple of images already. Um, so I often think when I look through art history, I often think about IMAX movies. Uh, and it seems like we're always sort of creating the IMAX theater. So when we talked about cave art, to me, this gigantic spectacle of a place like Lascaux, that's sort of the IMAX theater of the day. And when we look at a place like Chartres or the, any of these Gothic cathedrals, these cathedrals are the IMAX theater of the day, I think. So this is a mostly not so literate culture. Um, so the cathedral becomes the Bible, uh, you know, sort of written in stone. We have the invention of these rose windows. They weren't able to suspend these large glass elements before. So this space becomes this, you know, perhaps almost hypnotic kind of space with this large, obviously these, these lights are contemporary, but the light from this window is, is what it would have been. And... Um, you know, these amazing places. So, uh, you know, we've got these saints on the, on the facade and really this incredible experience. Chartres is a little bit of a Frankenstein-like cathedral because it kept burning down. And so they kept rebuilding it, which is, you know, maybe not making the most uh, integrated project, but it certainly is providing a bit of an encyclopedic experience for us. So for example, if you look at these two spires, they're very different. This one didn't burn down spire here or here um, is really a much earlier, almost Romanesque style of architecture. And then here, the much more recent. So 
uh, you'll note uh, the right tower spire early 13th century, the left tower spire early 16th. Um, the newer spire is much more gothic, much more ornate and spindly. So it's both using uh, architectural technology and the increasing, uh, you know, sort of sensibility of this gothic age. Um, and then we've got the high gothic, uh, a place like Rheims Cathedral, and then, you know, Joan of Arc uh, coming later. And I just want to leave with, with one sort of a little bit playful idea, which is the question, does goth, as in some of your high school friends, have anything to do with gothic? And uh, does this have anything to do with this? Um, and the official answer is not really, I'll let you read these notes for yourself. The official answer is not really, but there is, you know, maybe vaguely, not really, but vaguely. Um, and so I just uh, sort of playfully, so here's some jewelry that is in fact kind of gothic in its styling, but it is also jewelry that a goth might wear. Um, and so I've taken a cathedral and I've taken a, a goth choker and I couldn't resist turning the choker upside down and putting the goth choker and the gothic cathedral together. And we see that um, sort of the official answer is that these things are not really related, but I do think that there's an aesthetic sensibility that does seem to cross between them. So anyway, there's a couple of super quick thoughts about the Middle Ages.